In this video, I wanna show you something that can easily flood your house. A lot of homes have high efficiency furnaces. There's many scenarios where your system could have a condensate pump, but the problem is when the safety switch is not connected. I actually went to a home the other day where they had a brand new furnace in their attic and the safety switch was not connected. So I'm gonna show you how this works and why the safety switch is so important to have it wired in. Okay, so this right here is a condensate pump. Now, if you look at your furnace and you see this, basically what it's doing, we have these little caps here for additional drain ports. You can drain multiple things into one singular pump. So for instance, if we had AC hooked up to our demo furnace, our evaporator coil would have a drain that would go down to here. But this particular drain is for our high efficiency furnace. It condensates and creates water and that water has to be then pumped out. So this kicks on maybe once every couple hours to simply pump it out. It pumps for maybe uh, 10 seconds and then it's off, but it pumps out a pretty good amount of water every time. Now here is the problem. So every condensate pump will have two wires or some of them will have two little pins on the, the top here and you can actually just plug in a spade connector to those pins. Okay, so I took the cover off of this just so I can show you actively how this pump works. But there's a little float switch inside of here and I'm gonna manually activate this switch, basically simulating that the water has come up to like this level. So notice what happens. As soon as that happens, it pumps this water up this tube and out of the exterior of the home. Now, say for instance, this fills up all this way and the pump is has gone bad. This is something that um, runs all the time. So inevitably, this is gonna go bad at some point. The whole purpose of this safety switch is to say, okay, the pump is, the water has passed this level, but the pump isn't doing anything and it will turn the whole system off. So it'll turn your furnace off or your AC off so that it will quit producing water and it will not flood your home. Now I've seen tons of homes that have not had this wired in and that's the first thing I tell the customer is um, we need to get this wired in because this could flood your basement, it could flood your upstairs. I've seen some really bad things happen when people don't wire these in. So I'm gonna show you how easy this is to wire in um, any DIYer or homeowner can do this yourself and save a bunch of money instead of paying someone like myself to come out and do this. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna open up the service panel so that we have access to our control board. Now you wanna make sure that this, this uh, door switch is deactivated so nothing in here will be live. You can um, verify that if you'd like. But basically what we're going to be doing, and I use this as a rule of thumb, is any safety switch we install, we're simply going to break red. So we can either cut this and simply wire those two wires, one on each end of this red wire, or alternatively, we can take this red wire off and hook it to one of these leads by means of another wire. And then this one, we will just extend and run it to the red terminal. Now you can use any type of wiring, being as I'm a HVAC contractor, I have tons of thermostat wiring, but you can use um, individual wiring that you can get at Home Depot like this, and just use some wire nuts here, and then hook it to your board there. Okay, so when I do this, I usually just use the red and the white wire, um, but again, you can use any type of wiring here. So we're going to just hook our wire nut to one of these, and then we're gonna hook the other one up to the other guy. The polarity does not really matter here. And something that I like to try and do when I'm hooking up these wire nuts is I will put the stranded wire up a little bit higher like that, and then thread on your wire nut because otherwise the stranded wire will go too low and it won't get a really good connection. And you can really tell when these grip really well that they have a good connection. Okay, so that's that. We're gonna route it through this hole into the cabinet there, and then we'll make our connections to the board. Okay, so now that we're in the cabinet, a little trick I wanna show you is, if you wanna have some additional wiring like this in case you need to do any um, add-ons in the future, you can take a screwdriver and simply wrap it around 
and then let go and you'll have a nice little spool like that. You can pull it to whatever length you need and then you can make your connections. Okay, so now that we have our wires ready here, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the red wire off and I'm just gonna wire nut this to the red wire here. And then we're gonna take that white wire and we're gonna connect it where the red wire was connected. And that is literally it. Okay, so we've now successfully wired this in. So if you can imagine, once we power this up, we're getting power to this white wire. It's going through the condensate pump and then it's coming back to the red wire. And then the red wire is going to the thermostat. So if for whatever reason, this contact is broken, if that motor fails, this red wire that goes up to our thermostat will no longer have power and everything will shut down. You will have nothing at the thermostat, so you will know 100% that you have a problem. But you will not have a flooded space, and that's exactly the purpose of that switch. All right, so we just put our panel back on, our inducer came on. That means that everything is functioning like it should, except now it's going through the condensate pump, and if this ever quits, it will shut down power. Well, it's that easy folks to check the condensate pump on your HVAC system. Hopefully this was simple enough for you to be able to wire that in and not have to pay a contractor to come do it. Now, if you're interested in saving money by being able to tackle your own maintenance every year, I typically charge $100 per maintenance. So you could potentially save a lot of money by learning how to do that yourself. If you're interested in that, check it out right here and we walk you through step-by-step -step how to maintain your gas furnace. Until next time you guys be safe, later.